Hi everyone, what's up? Quakey here. Hope you've had a great week so far. I'm going to be bringing you our last video for this week in our Life With series called Beginnings. Don't you stress, we've got more videos carrying on the story next week. Today we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 11. We're going to be covering specifically verses 1 to 9 as we look at the story of the Tower of Babel. What that means for us, what happens and how we can apply those principles to our lives. So as always, I'm going to share some thoughts with you around this passage of scripture. So let's dive in. So as we carry on from Amy's video and looking at Noah's story, mankind doesn't get any better, unfortunately. You see, mankind still chooses selfishness and sinfulness and mankind becomes even more wicked. And there is a downward spiral of man's wickedness and how far they stray from God. You see, this all reaches ahead in chapter 11 in this story, the Tower of Babel. You see, at this point in the story, all the people could speak the same language and they get together around this new technology they've created called the brick. And they're so proud of themselves, they say, we're gonna build a city. Not only that, they decide to build a gigantic tower as a monument to themselves, as a monument to their greatness. And they say, let's do it so it can reach the heavens, so it can reach God, and God can acknowledge how great we are. You see, this shocks God, and he looks down from heaven at to what these people are doing. And he's so shocked by what's going on. And he does this by making sure everyone speaks a different language. He makes it so no one can understand what anyone's saying. If they can't understand what they're saying, they can't work together. If they can't work together, they can't finish the city and this massive, massive tower. And so they're scared and they abandon the project. You see, there's actually quite a few things we can learn from this story. The main thing is this. You see, the city the people were building wasn't one to glorify God. It wasn't a city that was going to reflect God's principles and his goodness like in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't going to be that sort of place. It was going to be a place of arrogance and wickedness and more sinfulness and selfishness. You see, the people use this technology that they come up with and it made them arrogant. It made them proud. And that pride took them far from the heart of God. You see, how often do we do the same thing? How often do we allow our gifts and our talents to overshadow God's goodness? To overshadow our gratitude and thankfulness to him? Maybe you can sing. Maybe you're a great speaker. Maybe you're good at making friends. Whatever it is, don't be like the people in this story. Don't allow that to make you proud and full of yourself to the point where you can no longer see God to the point where you don't acknowledge him and his goodness. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be happy about the things you're able to do. False humility isn't any as good as pride. Be happy about what you're able to accomplish. Be happy about the fact that you're able to have these talents and have these gifts. But remember who gave them to you. Remember who makes your gift great, and that's God. In everything you do, your gift or your talent, whatever it may be, always remember to reflect glory back to God, because he's the one who gives gifts. Be happy at what you're able to accomplish, but never forget what God is doing through you, through your gift. Make sure that whatever you're using, whatever you have, you're reflecting God's glory and his image and his likeness to the world so people can encounter and meet him through what you do. You see, at the end of this passage, we get a genealogy. And that leads us on to next week's lot of videos. You see, the genealogy leads us to Abraham. And we once again see in that story how God is going to redeem mankind again how he's going to make another miracle out of their mess. But that's the end of my video, guys, today. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're blessed by it. I hope you take something away from it too. As always, if you have questions, why don't you drop something in the comments for us? Always remember, me and Amy are going to be on Instagram Live at 4 p.m. on Fridays. Make sure you follow NumYFC on Instagram. You can find us. Just put at NumYFC. Make sure you tune in for those lives. We'll be answering all your questions, covering all the things we've done in our Life Words videos so far for that week. So make sure you're there. As always, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Hope you have a great weekend as well. God bless and we'll see you soon for the next lot of LifeWords videos.